So for the next part, let's go ahead and see if we can maybe connect an app to the printer. So I got the Anchor Maker app downloaded. I'm gonna open it up. So it looks like we're gonna have to accept some stuff here. Allow notifications, and it shows us the M5 there. So I guess let's click log in. And apparently it looks like you do need to make an account to even use this. So I guess let's go ahead and click on this plus up here. So under the sign in button, there's a little sign up. And I guess we gotta click that. So you're gonna enter all your information there. Agree to the terms and click sign up. So now we have to activate the account through your email and then sign in. So once you sign in, it's gonna ask you what country you're in. We'll put USA, well I guess United States. Confirm and we signed in. So now we have an option to add the printer. So we gotta allow it to search only while using this tab. Allow, so it's using Bluetooth looks like. And it found our printer here, so let's click on it. And here it's want us to verify. So it's putting out a number here that we gotta enter into the phone. So now it wants to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Click done. And looks like we are connected. All right, and there we go. We can see all the stats of our printer. So under settings, we can see the name of the printer, the connection. We can share the printer. Printer diary, what does that mean, I wonder? Yeah, not too sure. Maybe the prints that we've printed about the device and remove it. So here we have a big print button and then camera view looks like. It's saying that I'm using the phone's data, which is fine. Actually, I am on LTE, by the way. I'm not even connected to Wi-Fi, so I'm fine with that. So you don't even have to be home and you should be able to access the camera. And there it goes. So we can actually see there and you guys can see the latency. It's not bad. It's like a couple seconds. And we can also turn on the light and we can also record and screenshot this. So yeah, pretty cool. You can horizontally view it also. So going back here, we have temperature controls so you can control the temperatures and also start here. And then we got the move controls. It's saying failed for some reason. It's not able to for me to do anything here. In any case, let's click on the print button and it says no printable files found on USB and internal. We have that one file. So if you were going to use your phone, you're going to have to, you know, bring your models into here and then you can print them out straight from the phone. So if you wanted the printer that's completely controllable and usable with your phone, you do have that option here with the M5. But I'm actually more interested in controlling the printer from the desktop. So let's see if we can download that software and also try to wirelessly connect to the printer from the computer. All right, so here we are at the anchormake.com website. And here we can see the M5 and uh, some marketing. And look at that, they even have multicolor material kit. That's really cool. I'm not sure if that's out yet or not. Yeah, very nicely done. So on the top here, we're gonna click on software. Here we have computer and app. So we already downloaded the app. So for the computer, we can see it's called the Anchor Make Slicer and it's in beta. And you have a choice for Windows or Mac. So I'm using a Mac, so I'm gonna download that. And that's all we need here. So here's the file that was downloaded. So I'm gonna open it up and it's gonna ask me to drag this into the applications folder. And now it should be installed on my computer. And if I go to applications, we can see here, it's right on top and it says Anchor Make. So let's go ahead and open that up. So it's gonna ask me if it's okay to do that. I'm gonna say yes. So it looks like here we're gonna have to accept some terms and conditions. And here we have the slicer, which I need to minimize here a bit so it can fit in this screen. We have a pretty dark theme here, which I really like. So we can see our printing volume, very nice. Our typical navigation here is on the left. On the top we have slice preview device. And on the left side here we have the parameters of the machine. So this looks pretty familiar as it kind of looks like Cure software. So this would be pretty easy to figure out. So over here where it says slice preview and device, if I click on device, it says here how to install the printer and it looks like you do have to use your phone, which I have the printer on right now and it's not pulling it up. And actually going to the machine here, you can see that it's asking for a firmware update. So maybe that's why it's not connecting. So let's go ahead and do that and let it update and we'll see if we can connect. We do have the Wi-Fi active. And on the app, I am connected. So yeah, it should be all good to go, but we'll see here in a second. All right, so it's rebooting. All right, it says firmware complete, the update. Click OK. It's not connected to the Wi-Fi yet, and we've got a little red dot under the settings. Let's see what that's all about, firmware. Okay, so it's saying we have the latest firmware here. So Okay, and it looks like our Wi-Fi is not connected anymore, so we might have to redo that. Okay, it just automatically connected, actually. And we're back online. So let's see if we can't figure out how to connect from the computer. 
All right, so here back at the computer, I cannot figure out how to get this thing to connect. I click refresh, I turned it off and restarted it. It still doesn't seem to react at all to trying to connect and everything is connected to the same Wi-Fi. So back here at the printer, I noticed that the firmware button still got a little red dot. So if we click on check for updates, it looks like it has another update. So yeah, I guess let's just keep updating until it's happy and maybe that'll help it connect to the computer. All right guys, so after clicking around, I realized that, and you guys can see this, but on the very top, there's an account button. And if you click on that, it asks you to log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So we'll click on sign in, and it's asking us for our region. Click United States, save, sign in. And yeah, and I guess we're signed in now. I wonder if it's gonna work, and sure enough, look at that. It looks like we have something new here, Try Cloud. So we actually have everything in our internal storage, which is actually a lot more things than we had before. So I guess the updates added a bunch of files to print. And then we got the USB type C port there. So very interesting. And it does look like we are connected to the printer as we have this little Wi-Fi icon that's green and we can see our bed and nozzle temperatures, which are at idle. So let's just go ahead and try to slice something. We'll start with the little calibration cube. So I just dragged in a file. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. So if we click on it, we can see we can move it around here by these little arrows. Or you can type it in here in millimeters. We also have scale and you can drag it to make it larger and smaller. And then we can also rotate the model around in any direction. So if we go to this side of the slicer, we can see we got our machine selected. 0.4 nozzle printing in PLA plus, I guess. Parameters are easy mode, expert mode, and more. So if we click on more, we can see we can do the detailed parameters. So the easy one is going to be a 0.2 layer height with 10% infill. And expert mode, we're going to have a lot more control. But I think what I want to do, this is a little complicated here, is maybe go to more and we'll build a custom one. So I'm going to click on create down here and call it just custom, save it. And now we can adjust everything. So under quality, we've got 0.2 layer height. Initial layer is 1.3. Seems kind of low, but I'm going to let it be as it probably needs to be. So everything here looks pretty good, I think. Under walls, it also looks good. Everything here looks okay. Top and bottom for the top layers, we'll change that to five instead of four. And yeah, everything else looks pretty good. Going down to infill, we got 10%. I think I like to bump this up to 18 and the material. So yeah, this gets pretty uh, detailed here with all the settings, a lot more detailed than I'm usually used to. So I'm skipping a lot of it, but our initial layer printing is at 230. Wow, that's pretty high. And then 200 after that. That's quite interesting there. I guess maybe that helps it stick to the bed. 60 on the bill plate, flow and everything else here looks good. And the initial flow rate is also higher. So here we have the travel speed and these are crazy speeds and even though this printer seems to be very capable of those speeds for the calibration cube and the benchy i'm going to print these at my usual speed which is only 50 millimeters a second and we'll see how well this printer does and then i'll print out much faster of the same models but yeah i think everything here is okay so much to go through it's a little overwhelming to be honest but if you know what you're looking at obviously all these are very helpful so we got retractions at three millimeters that should be more than enough and yeah i'm just gonna leave everything here the way it is and hopefully it's already all preset exactly like it needs to be and we're not using supports and you can here if you click this you can see you can put in the support parameters and then build adhesion we got skirt is what i like to use but I like three lines around instead of one. So it's gonna go around the print three times and then start printing. And then under special modes, we've got spiralized outer contour, which we will also try out. So yeah, let's save this and we'll click on custom here for our parameters, because that's what we just adjusted. So now we can slice it. And here we have a little preview of our print. Very nice, and each layer here. And in here it shows us how long it's gonna take to only 24 minutes, well 25 minutes, four grams. So we have two options here. We can click print or export. Let's, I guess, click on print. It's creating AI image. And now it's asking us where we want to print. So it brings up the printer. So yeah, I guess it is as simple as just slicing and it'll all automatically guide you as long as you have everything connected to the Wi-Fi. And that AI processing it did, it looked like it was letting the printer know what the print looks like as it's printing. So it can monitor it in case anything goes wrong and it'll let you know. So, so I'm going to choose the M5 and then click on print and it's sending it to the printer. Yep, it is. I heard the beep from the printer. So I need to take this stuff off as it's getting ready to print the new one. I think I did want to use a different filament. So I think I will have to quickly do that here in a second.
All right, so it said we have some kind of error here, but I'm not sure exactly what it's talking about. I think it was using the camera there to check the print, but maybe it just didn't see it too well or what. But it seems to be printing fine now. I'm just going to click OK. In any case, it looks like we are printing and everything's fine. I did set the offset up just a little bit because it seemed a little close again. So, yeah, in any case, it looks good and everything is going OK now. All right, so back at the computer, we can see we get the same error code here. I'm going to OK that. So yeah, it looks like we don't get any kind of preview here. It shows us here that we are printing 23% done. The file we're printing, about how long it's gonna take. The speed is only at times one, which is 50 millimeters a second. And then our nozzle and bed temperatures and the amount of filament it's gonna take. And we can stop and pause the print here. Kind of interesting that we don't have a preview of the camera, at least from here, but that's all I see right now. And yeah, now we can go back to the slicer. So if we click on it, we can delete it here, the objects list. Let's throw in a Benchy and we can slice that exactly the same way. And here's what all the colors mean here. So the Benchy is going to take only one hour and one minute. Wow, that's definitely quick. Now we can export or print again. So if we click on export, we can actually save it to the computer. In any case, guys, we did figure out how to connect and print from the computer, which is cool. And hopefully this quick little overview was helpful. So I'm going to print out the calibration cube and then this Benchy, and we'll take a closer look at it. Also, guys, with the update, if we click on settings, we got more options now. So we can adjust the speed, the nozzle, the bed, and the fans. So if we go to the speed, we can times two, three, four, and five. So quite simple kind of choices, but let's click on times two and see what happens. Click on save. There we go. Okay, yeah. Now it's sped it up. So it wasn't as fast until I actually said yes. And you guys can probably see that it's definitely a bit quicker now. So it's going twice as fast, which is 100 millimeters a second. All right, so we printed out quite a few things. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to see what speed is the best to print at this printer. If we look at the calibration cubes, we got the five different speeds. So we got times one, which is 50 millimeters a second, and then times two is 100, and then three, 150, 200, and 250. So printing all these out made me see that 150 was the perfect middle ground between too slow and too quick, which leaves too much ghosting and vibrations. So let's quickly look through them. So this is 50. Looks pretty good, but we can see we got vibrations and ghosting. The Y, the X wall, and the Y wall. So all the tops look great also. 100X, you can see a little more ghosting, it's more pronounced. And also on the Y, the walls also have a little more vibrations there, you can see them. So yeah, 50 is definitely better than 100, but when we go to 150, we can see we're getting quite a bit faster, but it's not looking bad. So there is, you know, ghosting, but it's more slight and it's kind of more wavy, which is a good compromise if you want speed also. So if you can imagine, this is three times faster than this one at 50. So that saves you a lot of time. And if we look at the 50 versus the 150, 50 being here, three times faster actually looks pretty good. And here we have the Y. So yeah, depending on what you're looking for, you know, you can choose to go faster and get a really good result. And that's the whole point of this printer is to print fast. So if we go to 200, we kind of start to get a little more sloppy, as you guys can see. And, you know, if you want to compromise for time, you can, especially if you're printing something really big. And 250 gets even worse. So, but then again, as you guys can see, it's not bad. It's still very acceptable. And comparing it to the 150 and 250 here, you guys can see the 150 is much better and less ghosting and vibrations. So yeah, the walls actually look very similar. So mostly on the churns is where it kind of messes up, but it does look a little more melty too, so around the corners. But still, even at 250, this printer prints very reasonable print quality that could be used for more larger parts that don't require excellent surface finish. So for the benchies, I didn't print all speeds, just four of them, which is 50, 150, 200, and 250. So essentially I skipped 100. So looking at the 50 millimeters a second, this should be pretty much perfect. And it does look good, but we do still have some ghosting or ringing there. Right here we got ghosting. Here we have some pretty good ghosting. But overall still looks very nice. Overhangs are not great. You guys can see they're sagging a bit. The walls look good and 
Yeah, I mean, pretty much looks pretty solid for 50. Here on top, I don't know exactly what's going on, but some kind of setting in the slicer made these gaps. I just went ahead and printed everything like that. Let's get to the 150, and you guys can see it still looks pretty good, or pretty much perfect. We got a little bit more ringing. Well, actually maybe less around here so yeah it kind of you know compromises a little bit but yeah I guess we could see a little bit more in there but yeah not bad for 150 and then 200 you can kind of start to see the waves coming in it's still pretty smooth though so sort of smooth waves and depending on what you're printing you know could be not bad at all and this didn't take long at all to print and this one at 250 actually only took about 18 minutes I believe or something like that maybe less it was very quick printing for this Benchy and you guys can see even for this speed it did very well you can kind of see starting to deform and not be so accurate but still quite impressive how quick it was able to do all this at that kind of speed and still come out very very well so yeah, as you guys can see, it does quite well at higher speeds, but I do like the 150 speed, so because this printer is meant for higher speed printing, I'm going to go ahead and print everything after this at the 150 millimeters a second, which will be times three. So I'm really excited to see what kind of prints we can get out of it, and I'm also going to try some ABS, and we'll see how that does. So here on the app, you guys can see we are printing. We've got nine minutes and 50 seconds left, and I am on LTE, so I could be far away somewhere and still see my print and control it from here. And if we click on this real time button, it's gonna load up the camera there and we can actually zoom in and turn on the lights so we can see better there and see our print printing, which is pretty cool and it's pretty good refresh rate and a really nice feature. So you can also make it full screen so you can see it, I guess, better. Now, another thing that's kind of cool is if you click on the print itself, you can see the parameters there. And we got settings on top and here you can adjust all of your different parameters including the fan speed there on the bottom so and if you click on the AI button pulls up this AI screen kind of gives you a breakdown there it does say our camera needs to be calibrated but I'm not sure exactly how to do that in any case yeah really cool that you can control the printer while you're away or at least see what's going on and also if we click on me over here we're gonna see a time-lapse and it actually generated a couple time-lapses on its own so let's check out this Empire State Building one and look at that so it's actually a time-lapse there we go you can see a little better there but yeah it's actually a time-lapse of the print which looks pretty cool and it seems like it keeps the head pretty steady there it's pretty awesome and you can download your time-lapse right here where it says download or share it so yeah pretty amazing